Hello and welcome back to the Reapers. Today we're in our A10C and we're looking at using the Lightning Targeting Pod, the TGP. Now out of interest, we've got it equipped on our right wing at the moment and it's on the second to last outboard pylon. It has two sensors on it, a CCD or a glorified uh, optical sensor, a television camera essentially, and an IR sensor. It uses these for searching and tracking targets. It also has a laser designator and an IR pointer and a laser spot search ability. We can control this from the cockpit. We can have the TGP up on either left or right MFD, but we're going to use it on the right one for this video. We can use it in air to ground mode or air to air mode. For this video, we're just going to be using it in air to ground mode. We'll do a separate one for air to air mode. So we're going to try and use this in a realistic scenario, which is where we've got a rough idea where we think some bad guys are. We want to get our TGP focusing in on that area then we're going to get up into a high altitude hold where we can take our time to spot, communicate, track and target and if necessary deploy weapons. And we're not going to be deploying weapons in this video because we've done that in the several other weapons videos that we've done. We're just going to do up to the point where we can start setting up our weapons. So to get our TGP on and focused in the right direction, like everything with the A10Z, there are loads of ways we can do this. We're going to look at two ways of doing this. The first way is just a kind of like a quick draw way. If you've spotted a target at the last minute and you're relatively low to the ground, that's what I would use to um, lock the TGP onto the terrain near a target and the second way is if we know where some targets are and we want to set up for a long search and attack on those targets from high altitude that's how we do that so with the TGP selected on our right MFD it's by standard in standby mode which means we can't actually use it so we're gonna to have to turn it either to air to ground or air to air mode so we're gonna turn it to air to ground mode okay so first thing to note that it is essentially bore sighted to our aircraft at the moment the camera is the uh, the main sensor um, and it's going to be where that little diamond is. So the first way in which we would fix this guy to a terrain near, near where some bad guys are is I would maneuver the aircraft so this little diamond is on or near the hostiles and then press TMS up short. In fact, before we go any further, we better talk about today's controls. There are a lot of them and it's going to be quite a big video because there's a lot to cover. So let's get going. First of all, we need the ability to switch between this sensor, this MFD, this MFD and the HUD as our center of interest, our soy, and to do that we're going to need our coolie up short, left long, and right long. We're going to need our DMS up, sorry, forwards and aft, and that is to first of all switch between mark points on the HUD, and then is to, to zoom in and out on the TGP. We'll need our China hat forward short to change the aspect of the TGP display, or China hat forward long to snap the TGP to a current speed or mark of interest. We'll have China Hat back to reset our TGP place of track back to Boresight. So if we ever get stuck and uh, we want to reset our TGP, we can do that with China Hat aft short. We've got TMS right short to define a mark point. We've got TMS forward long to create a speed. We've got TMS up short to cycle between the different track modes of the TGP. And we've got TMS down short to gain a terrain lock with the TGP. Oh, and before I forget, we also need our designator left and right, horizontal and vertical. It's these two chaps I'm wiggling here. Hotest, slew, vertical and horizontal. Also, before we go in, we should say that on our AHCP panel, we must ensure our master arm is on. We must ensure our laser arm is on if we're going to be lasing. And our TGP here is on if we're going to be using the TGP at all. So we're going to use this quick draw method now to localize the TGP sensor on our area of interest by moving our aircraft. So this diamond here is on or near our targets. And then we're going to press TMS up short to uh, terrain lock the camera onto that area. We have to make sure that before we do that, the TGP is soy, so we're gonna press coolie right long. It's soy, and you can tell because it's got the green box around it. Let's just find some bad guys quickly. Where are they? Around here somewhere, there they are. So we're gonna move my diamond over them. Ping, press TMS up, and you can see that our TGP is now locked onto the area where they were, and out of interest, I could use my horizontal and vertical slew like we saw in the uh, controls to move that about like that. So that was that way of doing it. Now the preferred way we have of initially getting the TGP in looking at the area, I will show you now. So first of all, I just need to reset everything. So to be honest, the easiest way for me is just to turn this off back to standby, turn it on back to air to ground, and now everything's 
re-designated back to the bore site here. So let's go into the next and preferred way of designating these targets. So if we've got a load of targets down there, we want to make sure that we can get not just our, our, our TGP center in the right place, we want to put a solid point down there, a mark point, so that if we lose situational awareness, we um, move the TGP out of the area and we can't find the targets anymore, we can s automatically cage it, slew it directly back to that mark point. So that's what we're going to do now. First thing is to make hard soy with coolie up short. First thing you can see that within our path vector there is a little box. It's going to be our HUD designator. We're going to move that box around with our HOTAS uh, slew keys as we saw again. So what we're going to do is turn in and we can be up nice and high and safe for this and we can be a long way away as well. We could be absolutely miles away to do this. We're going to go in close just to make it a little bit easier to, easier to watch. So what we're going to do is slew that little box out. I'm going to move it down to roughly where I think the targets are. I think they're about there. Now it's down there, I'm going to press TMS right short. And what I've done by doing that is on that where that designated box was, I've created a mark point. It's going to be mark point A. So the next thing is we need to have the ability to view and uh, work with that mark point. We're going to go to our CDU. We're going to click to mark, uh, the master mode to mark. So we're now working in terms of marks. Let's check that the mark point has worked. Quick look on my TAD here. And you can see that's our aircraft and that's mark point A that's been selected, uh, that's been created, sorry. So it is there. Next, we can have a look on our uh, HUD and we can see, yep, mark point A, mark A is there. The next thing we need to do is slew or force our TGP sensor to look at our newly created mark point A. So with the HUD as soy, so we've got that star in it there and the mark point A selected here. You can cycle between mark points, by the way, with tier DMS up and down. We've only got one because this is a simple tutorial, but you could have several bunches of targets all around the area and you would create a mark point within each target. So the way you could do it. Anyway, we're going to force our camera here to uh, mark point A. We're going to press China Hat forward long. And you can see what that's done is it's now forced our TGP center to mark point A. Now, if ever we get lost, so for instance, if we make soy our TGP and uh, we're searching over here and we can't find our way back to those guys, then what we can do is hub the soy with coolie up, China Hat forward long, and we're back to our base of operations. So that's to show, it's not something you have to do, it's just a good technique that we like to show you using. So if we pause there, what we've got now is two ways of, and there are more, but we've got two ways of getting our TGP locked into the AO and so that we can start finding targets. The next thing is to say we need to set up an orbit of this area because we want to spend a long time, 15, 20 minutes searching for targets, locking targets up, um, switching targets between uh, other friends in our saddle and our data link. So the first thing to do is check which side our pod is on and it's on the right hand side. That means we want to do a right orbit around the target, relatively high, ide ideally angels uh, 15 or above. That means that our camera is always gonna be facing, our two pod camera is always gonna be facing that way and it's not gonna have like these mavericks uh, obstructing the view. And obstruction of the view is a real problem. If I was orbiting the other way around, then the camera would look into that maverick and all I would see is a close up of that maverick and that's no good. So we're going to set up an orbit. I'm going to cheat just to make this easy. I'm currently here. The target is there, six miles. Okay, so I'm in a position to start my orbit. I'm going to trim myself out so I'm level. I'm going to put a small right bank in. I'm going to go to uh, autopilot, altitude hold, turn the autopilot on, and that's going to put me in a nice easy orbit. Always have my right wing facing the target. So now we're going to go in and have a closer look at the TGP. First of all, let's make it soy, coolie, right, long. So our main cross here, we can move about with our, our HOTAS slews, like that. And we've got lots of information that we need to talk about. So first of all, we've got our method of track at the moment. So this TGP is pointing from the camera down to that point on Earth. And that point where it hits the train is our track point. Here is our track mode. We're currently in area track mode, which basically means that we're tra tracking that piece of the terrain. We could use TMS up short to change that to point track. Let me try that. That goes to point. Point track is if you want to track an actual discernible object like one of these vehicles. And it's especially useful if you want to track something that is moving. So what we can see is doing that next. So I'm going to press TMS up short again just to put it to area. And I'm going to move it to this guy here. And you can see that we cannot track that moving target with an area track. If we turn it to point, I've turned it to point now. It's going to attempt to lock onto that dude. Oh, got it. <laughs> 
Okay, took a couple of minutes, but yeah, um, that is now locked onto him, and that will follow him, and we can go and prosecute that uh, guy as we see fit. Out of interest, I won't do it now, but what we could do is press TMS up long, TMS forward long, sorry, and that would create a spear, moving spear on that target, and we could then go and prosecute weapons onto that spear, laser guided bomb or a maverick or whatever. Okay, so I'm going to turn it back, TMS short, turn it back to area mode, and we're going to move back to the other guys. Now, when I move it about, if you can see that it changes to INR, INRA and INRP, that's because when I'm moving, it's not actually tracking any point at all, and it goes to INR mode, in the, uh, inertial navigation reference mode, it's where it's essentially not actually tracking, it's, it's relying on its data in the computer to do its best guess of where it's pointing at that moment. Another example is when you get the INR mode, is if we were looking through our own wing, or at our Maverick, if something got in the way, it could no longer see the ground, it would go to INR mode, because it couldn't actually see the ground to get a track. Let's start working around the rest of the symbology, next is an L here, that means we're in laser mode, so if we press our nose wheel steering, and I forgot to show that earlier, that button there, then we would use the laser, and we'll use the laser a little bit later on. Or if we um, press laser here, this OSB, it would now be using the IR pointer. The IR pointer is a pointer, uh, uh, if you like, an IR light beam that is visible at night, and it will be used purely for guiding friendlies onto target at night who have night vision goggles. If we have both B, then if I press the nose wheel steering button, it would fire the designated laser and use the IR pointer. Uh, this chap here changes depending on what you're doing, but we've not actually found out what it does. It doesn't seem to say in the manual. So. This here is our slant range, so 2.7 miles. That is from our aircraft to this point that we're tracking on the ground, or if it was the point mode, it would be that vehicle that we were tracking. Now, this is the aircraft's best guess. We can laser we can laser range check this and we'll do that now if we unpause and we in L here and we press the nose wheel steering button then it makes that slightly more accurate because with the laser ranger it gets a more accurate guess but as we can see there it didn't really make much difference okay next we've got these little corners and these are our field of view indicators so currently we're in a wide field of view we can change to narrow which we'll do later and when we do narrow it, that there will become the new screen here is our main targeting cross and as you can see it's basically where we're pointing the um the, the main tgp this little dot down here is our situational awareness cue it is telling us where our tgp sensor is pointing in relation to us so currently if our aircraft is pointing in the 12 o'clock position that way then it's currently on our five o'clock so it's currently looking backwards and that way and as we circle around the target it's going to change slightly you can see the angle it'll, it'll circle around that way or circle around that way so it tells you where this target is in reference to our 12 o'clock at the moment. Next here we've got our yardstick in meters. Uh, this is telling you the, the right, the size of the right hand side of this cursor, that line I'm highlighting there, in meters. So that is currently 40 meters and as I'm getting further away from the target you can see that is getting correspondingly larger. So it allows you to range, uh, sorry, it allows you to size your target so you know that that target now is about a fifth of 58 meters so 48 meters about 10 meters next we've done laser next is our laser spot search if we press this in fact we might as well do that now we turn on our laser spot search shown by this little dot here that's moving searching for a friendly laser with a code that we can change and i'll show that later so it's searching for a friendly laser so if we've got sly in another a10 he is he's here somewhere we'll get him to designate a target with the laser and we'll use the laser spot search to find that laser track and then we can designate a target from there but we'll do that a bit later up here we've got our altitude and this is our radar altitude up the top here we've got the sensor in use at the moment we're currently using our ccd um glorified acronym for our optical sensor our tv basically i say it's in tv mode at the moment we can change that and turn that to ir mode by using and again i forgot to show you this later earlier because i'm silly our boat switch we can boat switch forward boat switch aft boat switch center so if we go to boat switch, for, boat switch forward, we go to our IR sensor instead of our TV and we are black hot at the moment, which means that hot objects with temperature show us black and vice versa. We can go boat switch middle back to TV and boat switch down to white hot where white hot where hot things are shown as white. When one of the IR modes is selected, we also got extra modes here. We can press test here and it's going to give us our grey bar down here where we can test the gradients of light basically. We can change our gain and our level here. So if I want to change the gain, um, I would describe that as contrast. Then we can change that here. 
that we could just uh, change our level, which I would describe as our brightness. Like that. And we only get this with the IR option, as far as I'm aware. So, bow switch center, back to TV. Oh, I, I had I made this non soy for some reason. If you can't do anything on the TGP, it's because it's not soy. So make it soy with coolie right long. And let's turn back to TV. Oh, it is. That's fine. Um, next, we've got our level of zoom here. And we zoom in with our DMS forward and aft. So DMS forward, wee, and DMS aft. And that is showing how many times we zoomed in. Next is our field of view. Currently at wide, we can change that to narrow. And we do that with China hat forward short. So China hat forward short, we're at narrow. China hat forward short, we're at wide, back to wide. Here is our masking type here. It's not implemented in DCS. Uh, out of interest, it's... Uh, honestly, I don't know what it is. It helps. It helps you if the... Uh, TGP has been masked like we were talking if it was being masked by this missile here it helps alleviate that but that's all I know about it here is the strength or accuracy of our TGP INS it's INS uh, if you like driven and it's strength between 1 and 10 or oh, sorry accuracy between 1 and 10 um, it's currently 1 and I'm not actually sure which is stronger 1 or 10 I'm not even sure if this is implemented in fact probably not got our standard time here and our standard roll and barometric altitude there here we've got the coordinate on our terrain lock point at the moment so that point is that northing and that easting we can change that to mgrs later if we desire to that there is the measured and or predicted point track point in terms of elevation above sea level and that out of interest is our current laser designating laser code so that's all the standard stuff. Now we're going to go into the control where we get some more detailed options. Click control. First of all, we get TAF. Uh, I can't remember what it stands for, but it's essentially a warning. We can give uh, an altitude warning. So we're busy. We're going to be busy heads down looking for targets, okay? And what we don't want to do is fly into a mountain or something. So we can give it a warning for when we go below a certain altitude. So let's say we want it to give a warning when we go below uh, 10,000 feet. One, two, three, four. It's now going to give us a warning if we go below th uh, that amount of feet and it will also give us a warning if we um, go b above a certain amount of roll as well, if we're rolling out of control. Friend on or off, whether we want to display uh, saddled A10s, data linked A10s or not. Whoops, I clicked that by accident. Here is where we want to enter a laser code. Today I do want to change my laser code. Uh, my particular laser, designated laser, is going to have its own specific code. And we do that to deconflict with other uh, lasers in the theatre. And I'm going to set mine clear 1588 today. And I've now got a laser code of 1588. Now you can't just choose any number you want. You have to have something that is laser code friendly. I don't know what that is. I just know a few that work. Laser spot search is the laser designator code that we're going to be searching for in our laser spot search. So Sly is going to use 1688 when he designates, and I'm going to be searching for 1688 there. Here is obviously, you know, metric or imperial or off um, regarding our yardstick there. Latch. So when we fire our laser and or IR pointer by using the noticeable steering button, you have to press and keep it pressed. And as soon as you release the button, then it stops lasing. If you want latch, then it becomes modal. So you press the button once and it's on. You press the button off uh, again and it's off. Whichever you prefer. Do we want the coordinates in long lap or MGRS? Focus reset. If we go out of focus um, somehow, then we can reset the focal length there. And there is our north point uh, for our situational awareness showing where our north point is all the time. Uh, and if we're done in here in the control settings, then we're going to go back to return and that returns to our main air to ground page. OK, so that is shown the functions of uh, this. Now, what we're going to show is just a couple of examples of actually using it because uh, we've not actually kind of really got to the point of bombing anything yet. So I'm going to zoom out. So with my TGP soy, I'm going to zoom out with DMS. There's my target. Slew over to them. Zoom in. I like the look of that guy there. That'll, that'll do there. I'm going to get that bit of terrain below him. Notice that we're in I and R A at the moment, so there is something that's upset my camera, but it appears to have line of sight at the moment. I'm sure that'll fix itself soon. So that is my target there. I want to attack that. So to actually do something with this, what I'm going to do is press TMS up along to create a SP sensor point of interest, or R sensor point of interest on that target. Our SPI is now created. Let me just double check with our TAD. Yep, we've got our wedding cake there. So our SPI has now been created, and 
all I'd do now is use the HUD rotary to select a lazy guided bomb or a JDAM or an iron bomb or whatever and we can go and bomb that. That's, that's as far as the TGP goes. And the same thing when we were tracking that moving target, once we were tracking him in, in point mode, then we would just press TMS up long to create speed and then we can go and attack that target. Next we're going to show the laser spot search. So first thing Sly, can you find, why don't you find that moving target and, um, and then we'll show um, what happens when we search for it. So I'm going to make my TGP soy. I'm going to zoom out just to get a bit more situational awareness. I can kind of see that moving target, but I'm going to pretend that I can't. Let me know when you're tracking him in point mode and designating. If I'm um, laser on. On 1688. If I'm. Um. Right, I'm going to go search. So I'm now searching where that dot is there. And um, as soon as that dot fi finds a laser, it's kind of really L search, you can see. I'm just waiting for it to do its thing. I think it's outside of my search area. Oh, it's detected. So it's gone to detect and then it's gone to track. And I'm now... Uh, how to explain that? So Sly was la designating, laser designating that guy there. And um, uh, while he had his laser on, then I, because I used my LSS, I was tracking where his laser was. Notice as soon as he turns his laser off, I go to no laser and it just goes back to the standard mode. Well, I'm going to try and, it's, this guy's behind me now, so I'm going to try laser designate him, see what happens. And, mm -hmm. um, but I know the laser designate, the laser de designator has a range of about 10 miles. We're at four miles at the moment, so we can do it. Okay, slow. I'm about to designate on, um, stand by, just get my uh, point track going. Um, designate on. Uh, 1588 so if you get that set up please I'm going to try and get a track on this guy okay I've zoomed in acquired the track are you ready for me to designate hey fam searching designating now and you can see I'm pressing holding nozzle steering button and that laser is flashing uh, acquired track got it now I'm going to let yep. go and you should lose the target hey fam okay lovely that's done so one thing I want to show is that it can be difficult to get a lock um, with this point track so there's a little uh, thing that I do to help so I'm going to zoom out like this and I'm moving around this guy, trying to get him locked up. And I'm struggling. You see, it's not picking him up. Why is it not picking him up? It's because the size of him is too small compared with the size of my search box, you can see. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to zoom in so that he's roughly the size of my search box. And now he's roughly the size of my search box. It's going to make it a hell of a lot easier to pick him up. And you see, that's already got him. So that's just one thing. You can zoom in, make him the right size of that box, and it'll pick him up a hell of a lot easier. So we've shown different ways of uh, tracking targets. We've shown how we can create a speed for deploying weapons. We've shown how we can designate and Sly can laser spot search and vice versa. Um, the only thing I think we need to just now show is the laser point mode in the dark. Okay, so we're in the same place, but we're in the dark now. And Sly is now designating a target with his IR pointer rather than his laser, or it could be his laser as well. So to see it, I'm going to press right H, uh, right shift and the H to get my goggles on. I'm going to look around for it. And there is a sparkle. So you can see that's his plane up there. Because you see his plane. And that is where he's designating uh, a tank or something down on that bit of ground. So I could then um, slew my TGP over there, create a speed and go and bomb it. So that's it. We've not covered absolutely everything to do with the TGP air to ground because there's so much this would take hours. But that's what we consider, consider the main functionality. Okay, I hope that helps and see you later.